Hello, everybody. Welcome to the session on wiki portraits. Um, the title of this session is Transforming the Wikipedia Photo Desert into a Green Oasis. Um, so first, we'll do a quick round of introductions. Um, my name is Kevin Piravi. I go by Super Hamster on Wiki. Um, I live in Dallas, Texas. I'm on the board of Wikimedia DC. Um, I organize Wikilos monuments in the United States. Um, and I am one of the co-founders of Wiki Portraits. If we just want to start with Frank, introductions. And my name is Frank Schulenburg. I'm uh, based in California, and I take photos mostly about California. And I've been on Commons most active since 2012. I'm Harald Krichel, uh, user Seewolf in the German Wikipedia, but my photography work is uh, under user Seewolf, uh, user Harald Krichel. <coughs> I'm from Germany and do photos mostly in Germany and um, in Europe. My name is Jenny, um, Lee, that's my username, and I'm one of the co-founders of Wiki Portraits, and I've done a lot of, I like going to events, which is, how we started all of this. So I've been to Sundance and South by and Cannes. I'm Andrew Lee, based in Washington, DC, and I'm the Wikipedia at large at the Smithsonian Institution, but I've been a big photographer of book festivals, film festivals, and uh, Pulitzer Prizes I've done before, so uh, happy to see this as a formal project. So our problem statement is that many Wikipedia biographies have poor or missing photos. Um, there is actually a fun Instagram account called Bad Wiki Photos that kind of documents some of the, um, you know, poor portraits that we have on Wiki. Um, no offense to the photographers, but you know, you can always have these photos of people blinking, blurry, um, eyes closed, side shots, etc. Um, so that's a fun account to look through. Um, and the challenge stems from the fact that um, Wikipedia requires freely licensed media on its articles. So especially when we're dealing with biographies of living people, we have a requirement that the photos of them need to be freely licensed. But it's pretty hard for the average Wikipedian or free media contributor to get photos of particularly famous people um, because you, it's hard to get access to them, right? Um, and you often require press access at events to you know, get an opportunity to take a really clean shot of somebody. Um, <laughs> Hi, Josh. <laughs> um, so the, ac the challenge is getting press credentials and sending um, photographers to these events. And it also comes with costs like travel, lodging, et cetera. Um, another challenge is the foundation typically does not sign letters for press credentialing. Um, if you're applying for a press access in an event, they want a letter from someone high up in your organization kind of recommending you and vouching for you to take photos. Um, the foundation has sometimes signed these letters at a past, but they try to not make it a norm, which is a challenge. Um, Wikimedia affiliates, um, particularly on a national level, do sign these letters. Um, but that's also a challenge because um, you know, um, these film festivals, they've heard of Wikipedia, but they haven't heard of Wikimedia New York City. Wikimedia, Wikipedia it causes confusion, right? So it's kind of a branding issue there as well. Now, in this space of trying to take better photos of people for Wikipedia, there's been a lot of work over the years. We're not the first ones to do this. Um, Gage Skidmore is a longtime contributor of freely licensed photos on Flickr. Um, he's known for going to Comic-Con in San Diego and also lots of political events to take photos of people in the United States. Um, Wikimedia Deutschland has done a lot of work covering various events like the Berlinale. And many other affiliates have also covered events and received press credentials over the years. Um, Andrew Lee started a nice page on MetaWiki called Wiki Covers Events, where we're basically trying to catalog all the previous work that individuals and affiliates have done over the years. Um, so that's where we're kind of gathering all this documentation. Um, if you've done this sort of work and want to add your information to this page, please do so. And then um, Harold here will talk about some of the work of Deutschland. So all of Wikipedia is a photo desert. No, not all. We are doing this work uh, for some years now in Germany. These are G uh, German community projects and Austrian community projects and uh, Wikimedia Deutschland and Wikimedia Austria are funding these projects. So they are in the uh, headline. Uh, first thing, they gave us great tools. Um, 
uh, I have an Wiki wikipedia.de email address, Harald Krichel at wikipedia.de, and with such an uh, address, you get access uh, a lot easier than with a private GMX yeah. or a Gmail address. Uh, does Wikimedia Austria also have Wikipedia AT addresses? So I can recommend this. It's a great tool and uh, it, it brings you into a lot of uh, events. Uh, the next thing, I have a funny German word for you, Redaktionsbestätigung. Uh, we translated this as editorial confirmation letters and uh, Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia Deutschland gives us these letters since, I have them since 2018, I think, or 70. And they look official and they bring you into the events very easily. Uh, no, no, we have them s since the Festival Sommer. Festival Sommer is one of our community project, projects which started in 2030. 13, um, we uh, applied together, to, uh, made a plan of the uh, interesting music festivals, mostly in Germany, uh, and applied for accreditations. And it works, we get about 90% of the festivals. Uh, this year we cover about 60 festivals in Germany. Uh, the accreditation, which is uh, the, the application, which is done planned by three volunteers, helps a lot. And what we also did is uh, f uh, make a camera pool. Do, you don't have a pool camera. Uh, is Mati, Ma Mati, Mati. This is one of our pool cameras. We have six uh, sets: uh, three Nikon and three Canon, with good objective uh, lenses, and uh, they were very helpful, especially in the beginning. Then we had a project like uh, called Wiki Loves Pal Parliaments or Landtagsprojekt was the starting. We covered all German uh, state parliaments. We covered the Bundestag and we covered the uh, European Parliament with uh, mobile photo studios, also uh, funded by Wikimedia Deutschland and Wikimedia Austria. And there we learned studio photography and have now uh, pretty good uh, photos of uh, German, European, and Austrian politicians. And we do a lot of liter literature festivals as well. I started in my little hometown in the Black Forest, Hausach, which has a nice... Uh, what's so funny about Hausach? <laughs> Uh, a nice literature festival, which where also you see some uh, Nobel laureates sometimes, and we go to book fairs, uh, mostly the Frankfurt Book Fair, which is a great event to find uh, authors. Uh, you can get them from stages, very different quality stages, quality uh, lighting, and you can meet the authors and photo uh, take portraits on the run, it uh, has been a great improve, uh, improvement. I have the two logos uh, of Wiki Loves Parliament and the Festival Sommer here. And now I give back to Kevin uh, for the new <laughs> approach. Oh, Jenny. Oh, yes. Should I stand? OK. So, how could we expand and make the event coverage more systematic and global at scale? Um, enter Wiki Portraits, which is basically an initiative to and brand to get photographers press access to events um, for Commons photos. And so, two things: it both engages existing Commons photographers and also recruits other photographers into the movement. And so far, we've recruited a dozen new photographers who are a mix of professional and high amateur um, photographers. And the key thing is there are many people who I think may not edit Wikipedia but feel very comfortable contributing photos because it's just a different pool that we're drawing from. And of the events that we've done so far um, this year, so just even starting this year, we did Sundance Film Festival, which Frank will talk about. We went to the International Journalism Festival, which has a lot of journalists, a lot of people from the Global South. Two, we got two Nobel Prize winners. South by Southwest, which is in Texas, where we got Meghan Markle and some other 
uh, notable celebrities, the Cannes Film Festival, which was a lot of work, <laughs> so much work, that one, um, the Tribeca Film Festival, and right now, uh, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So actually from here, we fly back and then finish covering that. Um, and so in terms of the wiki portraits formats, there are different kinds of things. The, the key thing that we want is high quality, almost either professional or, or almost professional quality photos. Um, so there are different places that we take photos. So one is red carpet. So that's like Cannes, Venice Film Festival, and the equivalent, sort of the similar equivalent of, um, which is called a photo call, which is like, it's like a red carpet, but like, they're not necessarily as dressed up as fancy as a red carpet. Then the actual performances, which we've done at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which which often gets great photos because the lighting is quite impressive. Then we have panels, which is a nice way to just get like Meghan Markle, Conan and O'Brien, um, sometimes in press conferences themselves. So the film festivals are good because they will just put the celebrities um, in a panel to answer questions. And then you have sort of the award ceremony stakeouts like can and then um, and then in we will also talk about how we can set up a studio, which is not only for uh, the performers at a specific festival, but for just like normal people to get their headshots. Boop. So, so far we've managed to like scotch tape this together with a bunch of $5,000 or so rapid grants. We love, love rapid grants. Um, and then some private donors who are basically friends of mine and, and they're like, this is cute. This is fun, Jenny. Um, and, oh, hello. Um, um, at this point, the way that we do the funding is that it goes towards the lodging. So if you can get yourself there, we will cover the lodging. Um, not that's like not all the different cases, because some, but 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 the vast majority of that is is done that way. And then um, we are in the beginning of applying for a larger program grant for 2025, partially because. The rapper grants are always five thousand, but not it's like some things are cost. Like can was probably like ten thousand for us, um, but other things are are less than five thousand. So, what's next? Okay, this is Frank. <laughs> okay, um, so just to be honest, like I'm not necessarily a people photographer, right? Like um, for Wikipedia, I shot mostly animals and nature and architecture and uh, so this was a big adventure when uh, Jenny said do you know someone who would be interested in going to Sundance uh, I said well you know let me think about it and then secretly I pulled out my phone and I looked on Wikipedia what Sundance was um, <laughs> and uh, and then I thought, like, that sounds like an interesting thing. I want to go there. Uh, and I'm tremendously thankful uh, to Jenny and everybody else who helped with this because um, I have to admit, like, this was photographically uh, a lifetime experience for me. Um, I've never done anything uh, that was that exciting. And um, I'm going to give you like uh, two examples of what we did there. And when I say we, uh, it's like uh, my friend Jason, who's one of the photographers that, uh, that Jenny just mentioned. He had never uploaded a photo to Wikipedia before. Uh, we both live in Chico in Northern California. And before we went to Sundance, uh, I showed him, okay, here's how you log in. Here's how you get an account. Uh, here's how you upload a photo. And then we were off on a plane towards like Salt Lake City and then on a rental car uh, to Park City to Sundance. And Sundance is, uh, happens over two weeks. We were there for the first, I, I don't know, four days, seven five, days. seven days, okay. And, um, and so the first thing that we did was press lines. And press lines are, so what you see here are the results of some, some press lines. And it's, it's different than uh, red carpet. So the press line is uh, you're lined up as photographers. And how cool is that, right? Like there's someone from the New York Times, AFP, Getty Images, and then it says Wikipedia, right? Like uh, it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Um, and so that, that felt like in the beginning that that felt like super, super frightening to be right next to those uh, super professional photographers. 
But in the end, they were, they were very, very friendly. They said, oh, no, let the guy from Wikipedia also take a photo and so on. And people come from, from the right or from the left, and they walk by. The first photographer takes the first, uh, has the first opportunity to take photos, and then it's your turn, and you can direct the people in front of your camera and so on, right? And so... Um, I just want to give you one quick example of what was the most meaningful to me. We photographed a couple of people who were quite uh, notable, right? Like here, Devo, that band. I don't know who, who knows their music. We got a hat like that, and all the photographers, all the Getty photographers and us were wearing a hat during that session. It was super fun and so on. But for me, the most meaningful thing was um, the sessions, the 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 press lines that happened very late in the evening where people came on stage and, and, and in front of these things here uh, to be photographed that had never been in a, in a movie or in a documentary before. And they were, they were kind of young people and they were super excited to be at Sundance. They brought their whole family, right? And um, most of the photographers had already signed, signed off for the day. And so uh, I was really happy that I was there because what happened then was someone got on stage and grandma in the back was cheering and, and, and yelling and hey, that's my grandchild and, and he's on stage. And that was really for me, those f completely unknown people and to bring them onto Wikipedia, that was the most meaningful thing for me. Um, and then maybe we can uh, do the next slide. Um, and then at the party that Jenny organized, this is this is Jason's um, lighting equipment here. You can see that, um, and that is me in some weird ski pants. Um, and uh, we had a line of people who wanted their po portrait taken, and they signed up. Um, on a computer that uh, that uh, you operated, um, and so we knew the name and so on to later put it together and upload it to Wikipedia. And those are more formal portraits. I don't know whether we have an example. I don't th think we have an example. But when you go to uh, to the comments category, you see those formal portraits. They have this black background. We had a professional lighting equipment that we brought from Chico on the plane. Um, and I think we got some pretty good uh, and exciting photos out of that. And with that, I hand it over to... Yes, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Frank. Thank you. Um, so yeah, like we mentioned, we also covered the Cannes Film Festival, um, which is a very like highbrow film festival in the south of France, um, where like a lot of special premieres happen on a global scale. Um, and this was an interesting opportunity because we could get some of the most notable celebrities out there, as well as it was a good opportunity um, to recognize and photograph um, like new and up and coming directors. Um, so first, like we were able to see the interviews with Meryl Streep and George Lucas. Those are a couple shots I took um, that are now on their Wikipedia articles, and you can see Chris Hemsworth. I think, I think yes. his name is his photo there. Um, so we got those like high value celebrities, and those kind of contribute to like the vast majority of our page views. But what's also special about Cannes is they have a kind of independent uh, section called the Directors Fortnite where they specifically feature up and coming directors from all around the world. Um, so these are often directors who are, have like just recently become notable or aren't notable yet, but are very likely to be per Wikipedia standards. <laughs> um, so I would just pretty much spend all day sitting in that theater specifically for directors Fortnite. Um, they'd show their films, they'd come on stage, they do a Q and A, and I would take their photos. Um, so that was a cool opportunity for us to do both really notable individuals, as well as recognizing these kind of up-and-coming directors from yeah. all around the world. Just to give you a sense, George Lucas's first movie premiered in Directors Fortnight in like the 70s. Yeah, so that's that, that's sort kind of, of what we're trying to like capture. It's like before they become famous. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'll pass it on to Jenny to discuss the IJF. Um, so this one we did not get a rapid grant from. We I just sort of took some donor, <laughs> got some scrappy donor money for this. And it's just a journalism festival. It's in Perugia, Italy. It has hundreds upon hundreds of speakers. Um, we got two Nobel Prize winners, including Maria Ressa. And I know Josh here has the current Maria Ressa photo on her page. And does yes. <laughs> And then you know folks like Francis um, Hauser, who was the, what the, the one of the big whistleblowers for Meta, and then Tyler Schultz, who was a big whistleblower for um, 
a Theranos, who does not actually have a Wikipedia page. This is interesting whether or not he's notable for something more than one event. Okay, thanks. Yes, so South by, this is you. Oh yeah, so South by Southwest, um, as you may know, it is pretty amazing as a, like a triple festival, right? It's film, it's music and interactive. And on top of that, we had a studio run like we had at Sundance, but we also did in the field photography. So you can imagine what a crazy like five ring circus that was. So we had not only a, a dedicated house where yes. where they sent out um, things. I think we'll show the tent cards later on. Yes. Yeah, so there's formal portraits that were taken when we actually sent out email to all the participants and said, if you want to go to the studio, send us a mail and Jenny and folks handled yes. the schedule. These are like normal people. Yeah, they just got right. basically got headshots. <laughs> like, if you want a headshot, we will take it for you. And it's a good way to in, in, in interact with them. Yeah, that's like, true. These are not, common. most of these are not notable in the Wikipedia sense, but we have them in commons because they might be rising stars, first time actors, first time directors, producers, writers. So we wanted a big tent. We didn't want to just go for yes. the big stars. The one of those, does she have a gold medal? She's the Olympic medal. Oh, she's an Olympic uh, medalist. Uh, Mosiano. Uh, she was Olympian. Yes. So yes. sometimes we're getting them years after they were famous as well. <laughs> oftentimes their films will be notable enough for Wikipedia, but they might not be individually. So we would add their photos to the film page, like under the cast and crew sections. Right. Um, right. And you know, the, just this it's really amazing because we're there to capture the photos and your your mind is on what's this person's name and getting it all down. But then once you look up and go, Oh my God, that is a Olympic medalist, and their story is amazing. Like what happened to them after they got their medal, yeah. and you just didn't know it until you saw them. Right? It was we did we did over two fifty two hundred and fifty people over many days. Also, we we have the same house again at South by Southwest, and if you guys want to do wiki activations, um, we are trying to come up with ideas for that. So it is in March, in it's a eleven thousand square foot four story house where we basically wikify it for a good bit of the time. <laughs> Yeah, so we're always looking for more folks to get involved or to collaborate with folks and teach you some of the stuff that we're doing and learn from others as well. Oh, these are mine? Yes. Uh, mo most of them are mine. I took mine because I was too lazy to attribute uh, to Martin Kraft or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the middle above, this is a famous German author, which name escapes me. Um, <laughs> As an example from the Frankfurt Book Fair, I advise you, if you go uh, uh, on a fair, don't ask the publishers who you should photograph. Uh, they send you their newcomers and uh, expect you to write articles. Don't mix writing and photographing. Yeah. It's like uh, being a wedding guest and also a photographer. <laughs> don't, don't mix. Don't mix, yes. yeah. don't mix it all. Um, but uh, this photo is a good example. If they have a great, uh, a, a big photo on the uh, uh, booth, he's probably notable. <laughs> what is his name? This is really famous. I, I knew it uh, this morning, but I <laughs> forgot. Okay. Um, on the left, this is Renate Reinswe from Nor Norway. Um, this is an example for an, um, a red carpet photo. A red carpet photo in Berlin. In Berlin, they don't have uh, any uh, requirements for the photographers, which stand on both sides. Uh, uh, no closing requirements. Uh, what is a no, no dress code? In Venice, you wear black tie. Yes. Hmm? Yes. And here you see my colleague Jerome, and I don't know the lady with a funny camera on the right. Um, <laughs> kind of. Uh, Colorful background. Uh, down there is uh, in, the, in the middle is Adrian Brody. This is a panel, uh, the press conference. Um, it's kind of contrasty in the background, but Berlin is pretty good in backgrounds. I can recommend it. Uh, you see on the right side uh, the gentleman. Adrian. Ah. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. he's not. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a photo call background, and uh, it's very um, uh, very low contrast. Only the, the the logo of the Berlinale, and but this is also um, uh, example 
that you don't stand in the first row when you uh, come from Wikipedia and you are new. <laughs> uh, Idris Elba was so kind to look up and di to, to look directly in the camera. But, but you see, it's, uh, yes. it, it gives the photo uh, something special, but you want to be in the front row besides Getty and uh, AP. Mm -hmm. Axel Hacke, danke, is the author <laughs> in the middle. And I will say that um, we pulled the stats for the Berlin, Ber Berlin Alley. 10 million views per month of your, of your guys' photos from just 2024. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and this uh, in the, the right from Elena Ternovaya is a great photograph from two years ago. She went outside. Uh, you see the happiness of Carla Simon. She just won this golden stage, uh, golden bear for the best film. I gave a um, television interview, and she captured a great photograph on the on the street. So I took this as an example. Okay. Cool. Thank you. No, it's not deleted. We had, we had a discussion about the stage show. Because uh, the author of the chat show is uh, death for six, 60 years only. and But this is uh, by that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just to kind of all those photos, the results of all of them. So we covered six events, as we discussed, um, with roughly 1,000 photos uploaded across all of them. Um, and these photos have been used on over 60 wikis. This is especially enabled by Wikidata, right? Because if we add a photo to a Wikidata entry, that ends up propagating to a dozen or so Wikipedias instantly. Um, so we're able to kind of hit that global scale in that regard. Um, and as we mentioned, you know, we've been able to hit Nobel laureates, Pulitzer Prize winners, Oscar winners, and Emmy winners, um, as well a lot of a lot of up and coming performers and artists and cast and crew. Um, and in total, our images get roughly five to ten million page views per month. Um, this can vary widely, right? Because if a film is premiering one month, that article might get millions of views, and in the next month, it will get a few hundred thousand. So you know, kind of goes up and down, but we're you know, on a five to 10 million scale. Um, and the celebrities is due to heavy lifting of views, of course. Um, and what's really cool is when we're at these events, taking photos and like uploading them the same day, there's a lot of news coverage of these same premieres, these same directors, these same actors, but they don't have access to photos. But our photos are, of course, freely licensed. So it's fun to see um, our photos end up being used on news sites all around the world. Um, so we've had new sites from Singapore to France using our photos. Um, I actually have a Google alert set up with my own name, right? So if someone uses my photo on a new site and attributes me, as they should, um, I'll get an email about it and get to see where my uh, photo was used. So that's, as an amateur photographer, it's really exciting to see your photo used by like professional outlets. And then lessons learned. This will be, I think, Andrew. Oh, yeah. So just very quickly and some lessons learned. This might not be new to some folks who've done it um, before, but it might not be obvious. So in the field, as I mentioned, something like South by Southwest, we're doing a lot of talking. Am I on the camera? I think we're okay. Um, we're doing a lot of the work by going out and covering folks in the field already. So as many of you know, probably the, the camera that he has there is a long lens. So sometimes you're not in the front row. You have to stand in the back. You, get a, you have to have a very fast lens to get that. Um, places like uh, book festivals are great. The subject is sitting there signing books. They're not moving. they got good lighting. Sometimes I, I like taking pictures of folks when there's no one there, and they think that, my god, no one's coming here to see me sign and sign books. And then you say, I'm from Wikipedia. I'm going to take your photo. It's going to be in Wikipedia. And they say, oh my god, this is great, because no one's coming to get my signature. So it's worth the trip for them, and I've seen that their face light up when, when there is no one coming to see their book. Um, in studio, you definitely need in the how, uh, front of house people management. When you're setting up a studio, you don't think of it, you think of the portrait and you take the picture and you upload it and you're like, what's this person's name? You know, And you need to get all this information. So you need as many personnel taking photos as you do just jotting down metadata, which is important. Um, it's the other thing is subject release forms, depending on what jurisdiction you're in or, or what the situation is there. Um, some of the events, we just had a, a sign that says, by entering the space, you agree to have your likeness used in whatever manner. But for South By, we had actual forms for them to fill out, right? So it's more official. And then finally, 
it's a time to educate people about commons. Sometimes it's just a good idea, but sometimes they're like, what do you take my picture for? What's And then we said, we're explaining it so much, we might as well put them in posters. So we actually made these banners and people, while they're waiting for their photo to be taken, could read about commons and CC0 and everything. And that was really nice. So next up for us, we have a rapid grant for the Toronto International Film Festival, which is, which we got actually some letters from from Canada. Then the Venice Film Festival, which Harold is going to. Um, we applied for a rapid grant for the Nobel Prizes in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, and our wish lists, so these are sort of things that we either missed this year or don't have someone to cover. It's the San, San Diego Comic-Con for 2025, so it's, um, which is kind of when you see a lot of the big celebrities about the big movies that are coming up next year. We'd love someone for the Jaipur Literature Festival in India, if anyone knows anyone, and the Busan International Film Festival in South Korea, which is a big Asia um, film festival. And then, and then maybe one day the Olympics, which takes about two years for credentialing, we, um, that's sort of a very big wish list. And we feel like as we create a track record of having very high quality photos and saying like our photos are seen, you know, millions, tens of millions of times each month, that, we, that the larger credentialing um, bars are, are more receptive to us. Boop, what is next? I guess this is you, is this me? Something fun about getting credentialing is they'll often ask you in the form, like, what's your viewership? And, you know, like newspapers and stuff. So, oh, you know, a few hundred thousand, millions, whatever. But for Wikipedia, we can easily just say billions. Yeah. And that sounds, that sounds nice. Two billion devices per month. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one easy <laughs> metric. But, uh, yeah, so as we mentioned, in addition to Wikimedia photographers, we're also kind of onboarding new photographers like Jason at Sundance and other um, newcomers. Um, so the question is, what makes them want to do this? Um, so the first is, we kind of help them get credentialed at events they otherwise wouldn't be able to. We can, you know, connect them to a Wikimedia affiliate who can sign a letter, vouch for them, et cetera. Um, and it just gets them access to cool events, right? Like, as Frank mentioned, being at Sundance was a really cool experience. So this is a really big motivator for photographers. Um, and it's also a great way to just kind of improve your own portfolio. Um, like I've taken photos for years, but like I have never gotten like any high profile people, but I can, I was able to get those photos of Meryl Streep and George Lucas that passed my portfolio. And now when I apply for credentials in the future, it becomes that much easier. Um, and it's just a great sense of community, right? Like we're all here, Wikipedians are fun. Um, so just being a part of this kind of community and network doing good things is a big motivator as well. Um, and it's just a good sense of purpose, right? Like you're taking photos, they're just not gonna sit on your hard drive for years. You actually get to upload them somewhere, see them used across the web, see them used on Wikipedia, as well as news sites and external parties. Um, so it's just a great sense of purpose for photographers. And that photo there is of our little badges that we print with a nice shiny Wikipedia <laughs> logo. Um, Thanks, this is me. Yes. yes. So what's really nice, obviously, is Wikipedia, Wikimedia has a global footprint. So we've been, uh, we, you know, we are, most of us are US based, but we made in a collaborative effort to reach out to other affiliates to make it international. Um, for, and you know, partially what, one of the most lovely things is photographs really transcend individual wikis, right? Like if you take a photo, it can be used across 70 wikis. And so you feel a sense of impact as a photographer. So we worked with Wikimedia Canada to get credential to, for them to sign the letters for Toronto. Um, we worked with, we're working with uh, Wikimedia Sverige Sweden to credential for the Nobel Prizes. And we, and then I had outreached, I don't even know how, but somehow like found, found the Germans and, and was like, does anyone want to go to Venice? Because it is a lot closer to uh, Germany. Venice is a lot closer to Germany than it is to the United States. Boop, what is next one? Ah. Oh yeah, so as I mentioned at South by Southwest, we also put, um, these kind of tent cards in the speakers lounges. So trying to get our project out in front of as many eyeballs as possible. So not just email, but physical cards. Um, and we actually had a number of folks come because they saw those cards left around. So we also had business cards made that we could hand to folks in the hallway and say, come by the house and get your portraits taken. So. And then finally, you know, what tools do we use? If you're going to an event with lots of folks there, you want to try to figure out like, what pictures do we have already in Commons? What pictures are being used in Wikipedia articles? If you're just manually clicking, that takes a lot of time. 
So a while back, I made the tool for Google Sheets called the Wiki List tool, and we've kind of revived that now. So you, it's it's actually useful for edit-a-thons as well. You just paste in a whole list of people's names in what column one, and everything else is generated in the other columns. What it does is it goes out, does an ORS evaluation of the article, says is it a C class, start, whatever. Um, it also pulls up the wiki data for that person and then pulls up what image we have in wiki data for that person. In addition, it's really cool, it will show you the most popular articles of those people there and then give you a little graph of what the average quality of those articles are. And then combining all that information together, it can give you kind of a shot list there. So you can see in the lower left-hand corner there is the list of all the most popular articles and what picture we have for them. You can see the one in the upper right-hand corner there is not very good. So you can just in one scan see that don't need a picture for this person, desperately need a picture for that person, no picture for this person. And it's not just good for our shot planning, but it's also good for edit-a-thon planning if you're into that. So for the longest time, people have been using this spreadsheet of mine, but just passing around. I've never documented it well. So we actually do have now, if you go to Meta Wiki List Tool, there's a link to a generic spreadsheet and you can customize it to whatever you want. So. Feel free to try it and give me feedback for it. Vera? You, you. Um, <laughs> yes, she has a tweet. I've, I'm, hi, I'm Vera. I've been photographing with press credentials at the International Film Festival of Rotterdam. And, uh, you have a similar I've, tool. Yeah, I've got the orator-matcher.toolforge.org, uh, which is a tool that... Uh, can also scrape a web page. So if you've got a web page with a conference program, you can just put in the URL and then it tries to find str uh, 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 strings of text on that web page that look la like a person's name with special sensitivities towards Dutch names because I'm Dutch and I'm <laughs> So, so Vera's tool is really cool, and I, I encourage you to find her afterwards to, to, to demo it to you because it can do a lot of this automatically. But for this one, all you need to do is you know copy the column of, of names from a program or just from their website, scrape it off, put it in here, and it, it does a lot of the work for you. So, and then, uh, so this is good for up to 200 because it is using just like an API call in Google Sheets. It kind of bogs down after 100, 150 yes. people. Yeah, we have so, noticed. <laughs> yeah. So, we're, so the next slide is maybe we can create a better tool, including Vera's got one, but to scale better up, right? Yes. So, future steps. So, actually, there, there are a bunch of things that like are on our wish list. So, right now, actually, if you pull up a photo like a commons photographers like category, it's it's kind of janky. So, we really, really love to do a gallery tool to better showcase because oftentimes. The way that you credential is you send them a link of the photographer's work, and like right now, like we don't completely feel comfortable sending them the the um, their comments page. Um, you know, obviously, the better reconciliation tools, sort of like what we are already kind of we've done by ourselves. Um, it's good for us to have a centralized database of the press contacts and credentialing deadlines and processes. Right now, sort of like in my head or like what I know from having attended these film festivals as a journalist. Um, and then, you know, we obviously would like others to join us because right now it's like us. It's basically us plus our friends. It's like friends and friends are friends. And we would love to conduct photography workshops to teach portraiture and live events. Boop. And we have a question over there? Yes. But I would also guess next. Do you also want to have the sports photographers in the boat? We are taking pic portraits. We are taking portraits at mixed zones and press um, conferences at sports events. And I don't think we will get you will get into the Olymp Olympics without credentials from sports events. Yes, absolutely. We would love to get into sports yeah. as well. Our, our people are not. Our current people are not sports photographers. Yes. Well, I, that was the recruiting the other. Olympics yeah. is like a multi decade dream, you know. <laughs> uh, Josh? But yeah. Well, you have There's a winter Olympics. We, well. we have remote people, so if you want to ask a question. Yeah, so, so we're going to take them first. We're going to take you first, but then we'll have a microphone for you next. But just one quick one the Olympics is not just an aspiration, There's, it's encumbered with so many problems in terms of royalties and things like that. So. It's not just a copyright or access issue. It's a much bigger pie of, of issues. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Mikola from Wikimedia Ukraine. We did cover Paralympics in 2014 in Russia, March 2014. It was very funny to be there. Not for me, but for those who were there. It does come indeed with a lot of like royalty restrictions because we found out that we cannot picture anyone with anything Olympic on the background. So we had to picture people with a neutral background, which is difficult to find at the Paralympics. I think Paralympics is very easier to get. We got accreditation at the time for we can use somehow but like you can start with like 2026 paralympics or something like that and get to olympics in 2028 but i think like figuring out the royalties would be a big challenge and so my question on this is like what do you do did you have any challenges with events saying like oh we give you permission to photo but only for like non-commercial or like something incompatible or like dealing with people who impose your restrictions when you get accreditation so the, sh the, sh the short answer, the, so the question has to do with the, um, whether or not the restrictions on events. At this point, the events that we have chosen is no restrictions. We are, so there are two things. So if someone's in a, in a panel or they're performing, um, we can just take the photo. And partially this might be a copyright issue in the United States. If we do a studio photo where they're not necessarily you know, being displayed, we do make an effort to give them a, um, a release that they sign so they understand what it means to be a CC by, because a lot of people don't like intuit, like, oh, Creative Commons sounds good, but you, you, know, you, you basically have to, you have to emphasize that these photos can be reused basically in all kinds, you know, even in a commercial um, format. And we have had some people upon looking at the letter either decline or just they just want their studio photography done and then like don't want to put on Wikipedia. But it's been just a handful. Most people are like, whoo, you know, it's, it's fine. It's sort of like the cost, the cost of having the photo taken is that it becomes a Creative Commons licensed photo, which is usually fine for most people because like it's not like someone's going to go look for a random photo of a random person, even with a good background. Yeah, from my experience, it's also a, a great opportunity to take photos at the uh, Youth Olympic Games, which I've done, done in 2018 and 2020. And lots of the people covered in 2018 are all, uh, right now medal winners in Paris, uh, Paris 2024. Um, it's much easier to get into these uh, smaller events from the IOC than uh, getting into the real Olympics because there are restrictions by the NOCs and they choose one people from this magazine, one people from this agency and so on. Um, and there are also some uh, competitions in preparation for the Olympics and if you get to these uh, competitions, you also get all of the Olympians, and you have a bit of much uh, a bit more time to edit the photos, uh, upload them, and they are there for the Olympics. Yeah, that's great. I know our functionary of the year as well has covered a lot of sports photography. Der Hexner, der yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Martin's Martin. great. Yeah. Josh first, and then back there. This is. No, it's fine. Go, go. Josh, go. Josh, go. Okay, very briefly. Um, I'm curious to know because, right, obviously you won't have coverage of the entire world just as a small team, and so you're recruiting more and more and more photographers. Um, and I don't know if this was discussed in the presentation because it did come a little late. But do you have like photography guidelines, if you will, for photographers that would want who would either aspire to join Wiki Portraits or who have not yet joined, about you know, but would want to take portraits so that if you're taking photos, they are all at least of the same quality, if you will? Thank you. But I think that's a great question. I mean, right now, um, it is kind of very wiki in that way. Like it's not any hard restrictions, but you're right. We, we should aspire to like minimal meta megapixels. You need to have camera equipment of a certain type. Uh, we did run into some problems because some folks had much more modern cameras that could shoot down to very low light. So like they could shoot like ISO 3200, 6400. And then some of the older cameras were like, that's not enough light. So you had some discrepancies there. So I do think it's nice to have some baseline standards to say, 
for portraiture of this type, you need this. Especially for sports, as you mentioned before, for sports you need very different type of equipment, frame rate wise, lens wise, things like that, right? And skill wise. Yep. In the back there. Okay. Uh, hello. One of my uh, chances when I uh, attend to film festival, something like this, or more the uh, Spanish uh, film awards. Uh, uh, with Wikimedia Spain is uh, the work after the the, the event because I have uh, like uh, two thousand pictures of two thousand people. Yeah. Uh, the most of them I don't know them at all because <laughs> I, Antonio Banderas and uh, Pedro Almodóvar everybody knows and we have uh, thousands of pictures of them. But uh, so I always face that difficult. How to name everybody I found? The, the unknown people and uh, something like this. So, yeah, uh, to improve tools or to improve a community who can make this uh, back uh, work will be really good. Because I'm trying to uh, keep the, I try to f uh, make the community, the Spanish community, to follow me in this. Like, okay, I have these uh, pictures, I need to locate the names. That's that's the point. So, I think it's a good idea is to improve yes. tools or so, all the community. <coughs> yeah, that's a great question. We had different systems. So uh, for Sundance, Frank and uh, Jason, <coughs> we synced the times perfectly. And then when we filled that spreadsheet, they call out the time when they took it. And then we had the names and the times. For uh, South by Southwest, they had a little whiteboard and they wrote their name and contact information. So we had that. But you're absolutely right. It's so hard. There's it's so much hard. work after the photography. It's not the fun part, but it's necessary. And at events like uh, Sundance, when you do a press line, you get a face sheet, um, and um, that yeah. has all the photos of the people who you're going to see on stage. Um, some of those photos look like they've been taken 20 years ago, so it's still difficult to match those with the photos <laughs> that you take. Uh, but still, that's a great tool, and I can only highly recommend when you do a press line that you bring your cell phone, take a photo of the face sheet, and take it back home, and then you can identify the people who you photographed. For us, the hardest, so through all the different tools, we definitely can't, if we've gone to take a photo of a specific person, obviously we know that person. The trick is when they're like, the entire cast and crew of this movie, come on stage. And then suddenly you have like 16 people of which you only know the director and maybe like some of the stars. And you've, you've sort of worked on that a little bit. Yeah, like when I was sitting in the director's Fortnite in Cannes, they would frequently bring up the entire crew, and I'd snap shots of all of them. I'm still going through those photos from May, trying to match people, doing searches on IMDb, doing like reverse image searches, just trying to find their names. So, yeah. Now, speaking of AI, um, what's actually what I found useful for pulling down names is um, like so for Edinburgh Fringe, they gave us this massive like three thousand line spreadsheet with the names of um, people that will be there. Sometimes it was the names of people. Sometimes it was names with commas with like multiple people. Sometimes it was the name of a company, and it was like I can't draw through all this. So I just put the whole list into ChatGPT and said, "Can you extract all the names?" Um, and it actually does a pretty good job of just spitting those out. So. Um, um, one short remark, um, if I'm doing sports photography, I have one part that does action pictures on the playing field and does the other part where I take portraits in the mixed zone at a press conference or something else and that's a completely different thing and you shouldn't mix it up and you shouldn't use the action pictures for the articles. We still have one more slide, but I don't know if it matters. Okay. Uh, hey, everyone. Pasita with Wikimedia New York City. So I have a question about um, how affiliates get involved in this process. What does that... <laughs> oh, is this this one? <laughs> the last slide, but yes. Last slide. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, so, so we're very... We're, we've mass Not mastered, but we have control now over the like wiki covers events of wiki portraits we have had our dreams of other ways to engage um, affiliates I do think a good format that I I'm personally interested in because I do a lot of stuff with libraries is like a local organization kind of can do an open call to people to get their photo taken if they have a Wikipedia page or as we say you aspire one day to have a Wikipedia page and then we and they do we do a studio 
format where it's sort of a party. And then as people kind of party, you can also engage them with fact, you know, like what is commons? Would you like to become a Wikipedia editor? Like, you know, like all, all it's basically a public engagement thing. So that's, that's something, um, you know, I've talked to Afro crowd while I've been here where they can, they can make the event and they need the photographers. And I'm like, if you can do it in New York, I can get you to photographers. So those, those are some, some of the, um, th those are some of the things. And the other thing also is like affiliates, that are like outside, if they have events they want to cover, I mean, we can give the letter that says, you know, we now have a track record that is strong enough to help them credential their local photographers. Oftentimes we feel like they themselves as the national affiliate um, can, you know, have, have certain kind of coolness, you know, so Wikimedia France probably could, could, could have, has certain kind of privileges to ask for photographers for the Cannes Film Festival. Um, but now, we've gotten to the point where we feel very comfortable writing a very good letter and then we get a bio. And then there are other kind of uh, formats, um, which would be workshops to train emerging photographers to do studio portraiture and event coverage. I think that would be something that we're interested in. And again, we, you know, <laughs> we can always apply for a rapid grant. The rapid grants have been very kind for us because, you know, we're, we're doing it with, since we've recruited so many people, we now have a lot of people who can apply for rapid grants. And, um, it, it, it's nice to sort of expand the sort of vocabulary of events that we have. Just to add to that, sorry, I think, um, you know, sometimes affiliates have connections and relationships with the festivals and institutions that maybe might be useful to the project as a whole. So yeah, yeah. I would say tap into that as well. Yeah, great point. Don't know who. Let's take front, front and then back. Okay, um, yeah, um, one thing about the editing, uh, it's really uh, yeah, the massive uh, part of the work you have to do and uh, getting better tools and therefore I'm highly interested in your lists. I try to do something like you did uh, in the Netherlands and maybe it's a good idea instead of everybody's trying to do his own thing uh, to get a, a decent tool running. Um, I don't know which software you use to edit your photos. Uh, we are working on Lightroom and there's a Lightroom plugin for Commons uh, that can export that. The sad thing is the maintainer died last year of the plugin, so if anybody is fluent in Lua and willing to, <laughs> to get this thing uh, running again, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, I myself, I tried to, um, to script uh, a face recognition Lightroom to Commons thing into that thing, because when you're taking photos of groups, it's almost impossible to do it by hand and say, okay, you have let 10 people and to name them all, especially if you're, you're not taking one photo of the group, you have like 10 of them and they are changing positions within these photos. So uh, it's hard if you're doing that without software. Um, and the last thing is, uh, we heard about several projects and I think we heard within uh, the audience that there are several projects more in different countries and maybe it would be a good idea to set up like a, a global photographer's list with specialities and the things people have done so far, uh, just uh, to be aware where people are and what people do in different countries, different regions of the world. And uh, you, you contacted Harold uh, to do the Venice Film Festival thing. And I think that's uh, it's a good example how it could work, that you say, okay, we do have a contact to an event uh, wherever in the world. Is there somebody close to there uh, doing their job? Yeah. All right. I, I Thank didn't you. actually even contact Harold. I contacted someone else. I didn't even contact Harold directly. I think I just... We yeah, I think what we started with, I started with, oh, this is a really good photo. Who is it? And then I mess, somehow figured out her email. And then she, she somehow passed it to you. Yeah. And yeah, we encourage you to use that meta page down there, the wiki covers events, even if you're not exactly an event. But people have started to fill that out. And I'm learning about so many cool projects in Africa and Asia that I've never knew about. So just as a catalog of what we're doing, it's great. Yes. If you needed to identify a photo and it was an event where Getty was also part of it, it's really great because Getty has a lot of photo uh, editors and these photo ed editors knows everybody in the world, uh, I would say. Um, so they can identify almost every people 
I learned at uh, Youth Olympic Games a lot. Uh, yeah, they are really good. Okay, we are at. We have nine. only four minutes. <laughs> oh. Okay, we have three more. Okay, go ahead. I guess maybe we could close on what's more of a comment on my part than a question. I, just as an example of uh, you know of how good we can of how well we can make these portraits. I, when looking at my on my iPad right now at a, uh, a portrait of uh, Christina Inhoff, an Austrian sports broadcaster. That was uh, that's a featured picture on both Commons and the English Wikipedia, and I, although ironically we don't use it in our article because we've got newer pictures. But that I think, if you go look at it, is one of the best portraits ever taken by a Wikimedian, <laughs> and that's an you'd look at it and it's an example to live up to. Thank you. Uh, and then back back there, back there, back there first. Sorry, she had her hand up a long time. Thank you. Hi, how you doing? Uh, I'm Sarah Thomas. I'm Programme Manager at Wikimedia UK. Uh, if whoever is in Edinburgh is still in Edinburgh on the 31st of August, we have a local meetup. Uh, you'd be very welcome. So that's the question part. And the comment part was, if you are coming to Edinburgh, if anyone's coming to Edinburgh again, I'm based in Glasgow, which is not too far away at all. If there's anything I can do to help, please give me a call. Yeah, just another comment. We now had the impression we talked about Olympics and other big events, but as we heard from others, it's also the small events where the the people of the future, the stars of the future, are active will be part of. So, yeah, take a chance whenever there's an event in your area, sports or cultural. Um, try to get accredited. Try to contact your affiliate and get a confirmation for your work and often you're lucky and can do something. Absolutely, I think that's great to mention that we're talking about high profile events, super famous people. Uh, Jim Hayes here is from DC and myself, we we photograph a local book festival every year. And w w this year, there's a gigantic line for this author named Ryan Kennedy, never heard of her before, but she had this amazing fan base there I took her photo. We did not have a photo of her in Commons. And that's what makes me the happiest, honestly, is when we, we fill this niche when we had tons of interest in it, but it doesn't show up on the same radar screen as a, you know, a big star out there. So I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. I'm taking 360 photos, so I'll post those, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.